Okay, so in this video, we're going to be reviewing equivalent loads and going over our example. So our objectives here are to replace distributed loads with their equivalent point loads. We also need to be able to understand and apply these point loads. So for some quick review, here we have a very simple beam with a couple points, let's just say A and B. And we have this distributed load, which we'll label G and throw some units on there. So this is a rectangular uniform distributed load. So if we throw in some measurements here, our force equivalent will act in the middle of our rectangular uniform distributed load. And that is what the blue distance at the bottom indicates as well. So our force equivalent is equal to G times the actual distance that the distributed load experiences, so D, in this case, in the units of meters. So the meters will cancel out, and you'll just be left with a force of kilonewtons, which will act, in this case, in the middle of the full beam. So now that we've reviewed the concepts, we can take a look at this problem. So we have this beam that has joists laid on top, that are each carrying loads of 200 pounds. It's important to note here, we're given a global axis already, so we know what directions are positive here. So what we're looking for in the questions we're given is we're looking for the magnitude of the equivalent singular load, and we need to find that distance that that load acts from point A, which I've circled here. So take a few minutes and try this on your own and then come back to this video. So, we're going to first start by drawing a free body diagram. So here we have the beam, and all the measurements, and the different supports. And here is our positive axis, A and B. So here we have all the different six loadings from the joists, and they are each 200 pounds, acting two feet apart from each other, starting at point A. And our force equivalent, which we'll label F, would act in the middle of that loading. Not in the middle of the whole beam, but in the middle of the actual loading itself that we are trying to create the equivalent force for. And that distance would be from A, we're just going to label D. So we have our free body diagram here again, and I've also done a version that shows it as a rectangular loading. So first starting with finding the magnitude of F in this case. So F will be equal to the absolute value of 200 pounds, but it's important to note it will be negative since the force is acting downwards, and we have six separate individual forces pushing down. So the equivalent force will be 200 pounds times six because we have six total forces. So that means that F is equal to negative 1,200 pounds, making this the correct answer. Now to find the distance from point A, we need to half the actual rectangular distance, not the whole distance from the beam. So D is equal to two feet times five because there are five of the two feet under our loading. And then we'll divide that by two to get half the distance because we are dealing with a rectangle as shown above. So our distance, D, is equal to 5 feet, making this the correct answer. So that is one way you could find D. However, if we want to try a more general approach that you can use regardless of the spacing of the forces or how many forces there are, we are instead going to look at moment. So the moment should remain consistent no matter what forces we're using here. The equivalent force should create the same moment at point A 
as the six forces that we have already. So that means that with our multiple forces, the moment at A should be equivalent to our singular point load moment caused as well. So we can equate them. So if we first start with the multiple forces here, we have our six 200 pounds, each multiplied by their perpendicular distances, which increases by two. And the negative sign is because these forces are pushing downwards, creating clockwise moments at point A, so they have to be negative. So this is equation one. So now looking at single point loads. So our F value, which we've already found, multiplied by the perpendicular distance, which is D, which is what we're looking for. And it's negative because it's down and creating a clockwise moment. So we know that F is equivalent to a negative 1,200 pounds, as we've previously found. So you can input that, make sure you don't double negative, multiply by D, and this will be our second equation. And then we can simply equate these equations as shown here, and move the 1,200 to the other side, and you'll get that D is equal to 5 feet, which is the same answer. So, in summary, we have our equivalent single point load and our distance from point A shown here. Thank you for watching this video.